NerdErotic.com. Let's talk about the MCU. It's a little nickname for Disney Marvel's Phase 4 that's been around for a little while. A lot of people understand what it is. Some people might be new to the channel, and Marvel stands absolutely hate it. Of course, there'll be the accusations of sexism and misogyny. Au contraire. Quite the opposite. This is just a term I coined for something Kevin Feige invented. It's a sordid tale of agenda, ego, hubris, embarrassment, activism, identity politics, and diminishing returns. This is the MCU Explained. The origins of the MCU, of course, come from the relatively new comics, the all-new, all-different Marvel, the tokenized Marvel, and some somewhat overblown Facebook research that was done to see what the percentage of men and women were into comics. Research that was done by a channel or blog named Graphic Policy back in 2014. Cliff Notes' version of this research, basically Graphic Policy, went over Facebook to see how many people were into interested in comics and unsurprisingly enough it turns out that almost 50 percent of potential comic book fans are women which is stunning research because i would guess that half the population is a potential customer and i guess the same would go for film and we can't forget the me too times up era thanks to this guy prior to phase four the mighty mcu was a juggernaut but there was one single film that embarrassed it Wonder Woman. Not too long after that, Kevin Feige was asked if there would be more female representation in the MCU, and he said yes, eventually there'll be more female heroes than male heroes, and that was the inception of the MCU. Let's keep in mind that Joe Russo just restated that Marvel doesn't have a plan. He's insinuated that before, and it's something we've always known. Just look at their announcements. Let's face it, Marvel is paint by numbers, but it's paint by numbers on the fly. They're not quite as reactionary as Warner Brothers, America's dumbest company, but they are a subsidiary of America's most evil company. Again, we'll go back to June 2nd of 2017 when Wonder Woman was released, part of the holy trinity of DC Comics, a well-established female character, something Marvel, quite frankly, doesn't have. Within a month of Wonder Woman's release, we started getting articles like this, Captain Marvel and Marvel's long history of women problems. From Daily Beast, that should not be a surprise to anyone. The first superheroine standalone film was pushed back to 2019 to make way for more world-saving men. It's the latest in a long line of lady problems for the superhero factory. No, Marvel didn't have a single lady to focus on because Captain Marvel wasn't it, and they also didn't have a lady problem to begin with. That was just one example, and believe me, that stuck in Kevin Feige's craw. There are extremely popular female characters in Marvel Comics. Up until very recently, Marvel didn't have control of them. I would argue that the first lady of Marvel is the Invisible Woman. Some might argue it's Storm, or Rogue, or Jean Grey. My personal favorite is Elektra, and the real Valkyrie. This brings us to the infamous June 25th, 2018 Screen Rant article, exclusive. MCU will soon have more female heroes than male heroes. Kevin Feige reveals that he envisions a time when more than half of the superheroes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe are female. No, it has to be more than half because Wonder Woman embarrassed him. Then we started to see it creeping in with films like Doctor Strange changing the ancient one from an Asian man to a Celtic woman. I've heard the excuses and I think one of them might be partially valid. I assure you their motivation was both intersectional feminism and China. And then the prelude film of the MCU, The Wasp and Ant-Man. And just look at that poster, Ant-Man was a bumbling idiot and there was wasp who was a great character from the comics played by a decent actress in evangeline lily who was just blandly superior you taught me that kick remember yeah and ghost the villain that nobody remembers but was the first in a long line of tragic misunderstood female antagonists then there was brie larson's Captain Marvel, a film that did admittedly make a billion dollars sandwiched between the two most anticipated sequels possibly of all time. A film along with the Disney trilogy's Ray Palpatine that invented the hero's journey. A film starring, at the time, one of the most insufferable actresses in Hollywood. Is that like a personal attack or something? Yep! 
you want your stars to have mass appeal, not half appeal. Captain Marvel committed one of the worst crimes against imagination, needlessly gender swapping Marvel into Annette Benning. The funny thing about the Nega bands on the TV show is that they're actually meant to be a big callback to the OG version of Captain Marvel, the very first version, who was a man called Marvel, who did appear during the Captain Marvel movie in the MCU, but he was played by Annette Benning, so they changed the character just a little bit. You gotta be fucking kidding. But he was played by Annette Bening, so they changed the character just a little bit. A film that was the first official entry into the MCU. Then, of course, we had that girl power scene in Avengers Endgame. Then it was just rinse and repeat. So what is the MCU from Kevin Feige? But as the plan goes forward, I think, frankly, we'll be... You know, eventually, I think we're going to reach a time where it's not just, listen, it will be amazing to see all of our female characters the way we have seen most. Never all male, but primarily male. I think we're just getting to the point soon where we have so many great female characters that those are just our heroes as opposed to when they are all female, all male. It's just the Marvel heroes, more than half of which will be women. The MCU is ridiculous gender swaps. Say hello. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Self taught mastery. I wasn't allowed to train with the boys, but I watched everything they did and taught myself to do it better. I Whatever taught myself. You, you taught yourself that magic? Yeah, I did. You were just a child when the TVA took you, but you nearly took down the organization that claims to govern the order of time. You did it on your own. You had rings around them. You're amazing. The MCU character requires constant affirmation. I like this one. Every day more people love you. You'll find refuge wherever you go. I didn't think there could be another Captain America until I met you. <laughs> Along with the constant denigration of the male character. Don't touch me. Okay. I'm a narcissist. The tit. Chiller male character. Listen to your mom. She knows better. Twisted morality like with WandaVision. They'll never know what you sacrificed for them. It wouldn't change how they see me. Black Widow. We stole the key to unlocking free will. Aww. Falcon and Winter Soldier. She's just a kid. You're seeing something in her that isn't there. There's still people in there. This is the only language these people understand. I agree with your fight. And Captain Marvel. <laughs> Here's a proposition for you. You're gonna give me your jacket, your helmet, and your motorcycle, and in return, I'm gonna let you keep your hand. Take it! Young girls inexplicably starting massive criminal organizations. Bad dads, girl bosses, retcons, and of course, the bait and switch. Which brought us female Loki, female Hawkeye, and female Thor is next, to be followed by female Iron Man. And Marvel has done a spectacular job of taking female characters that we used to love within the MCU and making them insufferable. And I can hear the stands now. You're just intimidated by strong women. Well, if your idea of a strong woman is a blandly written character underperformed by an overpaid adult pretender standing in front of a green screen, I would just respond with, maybe you should try to touch some grass instead of smoke it. And nothing says female empowerment like hiring female directors, but not letting the females direct the action scenes. So that's the MCU casting female writers and directors and not hiring them and having to degrade the male characters because they don't believe enough 
in the female characters to stand on their own, leading to the aforementioned bait and switch, which is lying to your audience. And really, at the end of the day, the whole movie is about our MCU Scarlet Witch trying to find a version of Billy and Tommy. It's still really MCU Scarlet Witch that's trying to push this in a very particular direction. Then, of course, there's Victoria Alonso. And it's funny that people call it the X-Men. There's a lot of female, um, of female superheroes in that X-Men group, so I think it's outdated. What? And you can't forget, just like with Doctor Who, it's not enough to just turn an established male character into a female character. They need to saddle them with identity politics and or intersectional feminism. No, it's Hollywood, Disney, and its subsidiary Marvel who are scared to death of women. We're not the ones overcorrecting and turning them into men like with King Valkyrie. <laughs> Are you serious? You can express any type of message if you prioritize good storytelling, but you cannot get good storytelling when you prioritize the message. And what are the consequences? Well, a billion dollar box office character Captain Marvel being demoted in her own sequel, which was delayed into the movie Dead Zone of February. Hawkeye was recently canceled. I'm sorry was a limited series. A string of underperforming Disney Marvel streaming shows and films that led to a stagnant streaming service and a stagnant stock. Only to be totally embarrassed by a film that they had 25% to do with, Spider-Man No Way Home. Leading to massive reshoots with multiple projects and the MCU is far from over. The latest example is Moon Knight, where one of the main character's alpha personas has been retconned into a manzel in distress being led around by a far more capable woman. I don't need protection. We're four episodes in and we've seen the superhero called Moon Knight for about four minutes. Listen, nobody wants a sausage fest. We're looking for a little egalitarianism, but that's not what Disney Marvel is interested in. Kevin Feige is far more interested in bypassing decades of great source material to get into adapting some of the worst comic books ever written that have led to the long, slow death of the American superhero comic book. And as the Marvel superhero film gets a little long in the tooth, it'll be very interesting to see how long it takes for it to completely destroy the franchise. But sure, you got what you wanted, Kevin Feige. Now you have a lot of female superheroes who are written one singular way, like they're the bitter, disgruntled HR director at Disney who had to give up a little bit too much integrity to get where she's at. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. Nerderotic.com, please subscribe. You had rings around them. You're amazing. Every once in a while, you come across somebody that just makes you better in every way. Hi, Sha Ling. I'm Katie. You're like such a badass. Everything that you do is like so cool. That was really cool. Is it your time of the month? I don't get my period dip. I don't have a uterus. Or ovaries. They kind of just go in and they rip out all of your reproductive organs. They just get right in there and they chop them all away.